How you doing? <clears throat> My name is Glenn. I am with V Power Equipment, and today we are here. We're going to do a little video. We're going to talk a little bit about our tri fuel conversion kit for the generators, and then after that, we're actually going to do an install on this AI Power AP4000 to give you a general idea of how the install works. Uh, our kits fit a lot of different generators. There's a, a ton of different brands out there and whatnot. Obviously, we can't do a video for each one. Um, so we're going to do one on this one just to give you a general idea. I'll try to mention things as we go through if I know there's something or a particular type of generator that I know has to be done. <clears throat> um, I'll try to bring them up and mention them, but there's no way I'm going to cover all bases. Um, but the, the general install isn't really all that complicated. <clears throat> and so uh, I think you'll get the idea. So anyways, let's start off by looking at the uh, tri-fuel carburetors. There's several different types. I'm going to show you a couple of the most common ones though. This one here is for the bigger generators, and we'll bring it up here so you can see it. And um, basically, it has the fuel shutoff solenoid, which the bigger generators have. That's not the one for this one. This one we use one without it. Um, and you're also going to find that sometimes we will recommend this for a bigger generator, and it actually doesn't have that fuel shutoff solenoid. And that's okay because if your generator doesn't factory come with it, you just don't hook it up and it basically doesn't do anything. Some generators send a quick pulse of electricity to this when you shut it off. And what that basically does is shuts the fuel off and the spark at the same time. They're trying to get it to come to a quick stop. Other generator manufacturers feel that's unnecessary and they won't put a fuel solenoid on it. We also have a bigger generator a carburetor like this. I don't have one here right now, but that doesn't have the fuel solenoid um, that fits some other generators that we also list out there. We try to list all the models that we know it fits on the website. There are so many models that we don't get them all. Um, you can always email us at sales at vpowerequipment.com and ask us if it'll fit your type. I can give you a general understanding though. It's easier for me to say the ones I know it will not fit. Um, <clears throat> if your generator is older than, say, say it was built before 2015 and it's a Briggs & Stratton engine, it will not fit that. The older Briggs & Stratton engines, it will not fit. Um, if your generator is an inverter generator, it will not fit in inverter generators. Um, and then if you got something that's uh, like an old American made, an own-in or something on that idea, uh, it's not going to fit it. These basically fit the, uh, the, the Chinese generators, which are so many of the models that are coming out today. And also it will fit uh, some of the Hondas um, and Predators and, you know, uh, Champion, a lot of them. Um, some of the, a lot of them names like that, they're imported generators and that's basically what these do fit. <clears throat> so anyways, let's take a quick look at some of the... Uh, features of this device so this this barb down here this is going to be where your your gas and that's going to come in not gasoline but either lp or natural gas or whatever it is uh this is a 3 8 barb and this is what you're going to tie into now if you buy the lp kit it's going to come with a piece of hose like this this hose is about three feet long and that's made that way for a purpose this 3 8 you can only run this about three feet maybe four feet and if you start running it much longer than that, you're going to get a you're going to get a drop of pressure in that hose, and the generator won't run. So if you're going to run natural gas to it, you're going to need to run a much larger pipe up to this device. You know, maybe a three quarter one inch pipe. All depends on bends and how far it is and whatnot. There's a bunch of variables in there. Um, really, if you really need to get that figured out, it's not something we can't really do because we're not on site. Uh, you would probably need to get a plumber or something to tell you what size you you know pipe you're going to need to run. But it, it it'll be a substantial size. So anyways, and then when you got close to it, then you would taper down and put a little pigtail in there and, you know, go down to your 3 8 bob. <clears throat> so this is, that's the inlet for the, uh, for the gas. This device here is, a lot of people think it's a regulator, it's actually not. It's a fuel control valve. And basically what it does is it allows fuel in, and as the generator demands more, as you put more of a strain on it and it demands more, it allows more fuel to go into it. It also shuts the fuel off should the generator stall so that it won't sit there and spew gas. Now that being said, you still have to have a shutoff. This is not designed to hold it back forever. Like you can't use this for a standby generator so it's always hooked up, the gas is always fed to it. It's not designed for that. <clears throat> so if you're gonna store it, you would need to shut off your LP tank, or if you had it hooked to natural gas, you would need to have a shutoff valve and you would need to shut it off um, because it, it can't sit for long periods of time holding back the fuel, it's just not made for that. Um, this button here, this is a primer button. So basically when you push this, you are allowing fuel, whether it be LP or natural gas, to flow into the carburetor. 
So this is good for initially for purging it. You want to get some of the air out of the lines to help get it started for the first time because starting it the first time can be a little bit difficult uh, because you've got a lot of air in the lines. You've got, a, you've got a canister here that's full of air. That's all going to get purged out before this thing can start running on LP or natural gas. So that's what that's for. And also you can use it to give it a quick zap to, uh, you know, to... Um, like right before you start it, maybe just push it for a second or two and then let it go. And that'll put a little fuel in it and that will help. Um, so that's what that's for. Now, if you push this for too long and you start smelling gas and now you feel you fill the carburetor with gas, walk away from the generator for half an hour or so. Let, let that gas, you know, go away before you go ahead and try to start it and cause some kind of damage. All right, so this here is our LP and our natural gas selector. So they generally come to you sitting on a little pin, which is the natural gas, uh, I'm sorry, which is the LP gas side. There's a little pointer here, you can see it. And that little pointer is pointing to the LPG. And if you wanna go to the, they call it CNG, which is natural gas, you would pull this out and turn it. Now there's no pin on the other side. Why? I don't really know. Um, and then that points down. So now it would be all set up for uh, natural gas. So that is basically the operation of this. The rest of it operates very much like a carburetor. You're still gonna use a choke just to start it, whether you're starting it on gasoline or natural gas or LP. Um, that being said too, just so you know, here's your gasoline fitting. So you are still gonna hook your gas tank to this device. And if you wanna switch, it's as simple as shut your gasoline off, turn your propane on, start the engine, and if you want to switch back and turn your LP off, turn your gasoline back on and start the engine on gasoline. And you can, you can just switch back and forth between the two like that. That's not a problem at all. So that is, this is the bigger one. I'm going to set this one back down. And this here is the one that's actually designed for this generator. So if you buy the carburetor for the end, what we call a natural gas setup, you don't need anything else. All you need is the carburetor the gaskets are gonna come with it, and then you're gonna to have to provide the piping to get the natural gas to the carburetor. If you buy our LPG kit, it's also gonna come with this hose to connect the carburetor to this, which is the regulator. So this regulator is designed to go on 20, 30, and I believe 40 pound tanks because it has the same setup as like a gas grill, and them smaller tanks have that. Bigger tanks have a different connection. They have an internal thread. This will not connect to it. Now. Do be aware that this is a special regulator for generators. It allows enough flow because a generator requires a lot more flow than say a gas grill. And so this will allow that type of a flow, um, which is also the reason we can't sell this separately. It has to be sold with a carburetor because they don't want these things being used on gas grills. So basically, we got our carburetor. We got our LP if we're doing the LP kit, our LP regulator, the hose in our gaskets. So. That being said, we're going to put these things over here and now I'm going to reposition the camera a little bit better so hopefully you can see this a little better and we're going to basically go into the install of this. So basically the instructions will tell you that the installation of this is the same as installing a carburetor and for the most part that's true. There are some deviations but for the most part that is true. This is like a carburetor install. Now on this particular generator we have a canister box here that is going to be in the way of the uh, fuel control valve so we're going to have to do something with that canister so what we're going to do right off the bat here is we're going to take that canister and we're going to pull it off and we'll just pull this out over here and what I would do with this is I would like put a little bracket off of here and maybe mount this up in this position just to get it away from that that uh, carburetor. I'm not going to do that for this install. Um, basically, you got to think you see want to sit here and watch me make a bracket. So that's that's like one of the kind of things you might run into. Okay. So now we're going to pull the carburetor off. So we're going to take this air box off. Set it aside. We're going to pull. This pad off, set it aside. If you've got one of these metal plates, they just pop in. So you just take it off. And then we're gonna switch this to this. So you're gonna you're gonna remove the two screws that are on the uh, connecting this box to the carburetor.
And then almost all of these generators have a screw in the back side of it. So you're going to reach around the back side of that and take that screw out also. Okay, now we're going to slide the air box off. We're just going to push that in. Well, we'll pull the hose off. We'll just take this screw and push it right out of our way. We're going to take off this gasket. And we're going to back this fuel line because there's your gasoline line that we talked about. That there you're going to have to take off. Just pull it back like that. Pull your fuel line off. If this is a used generator, you're probably going to drop gas there. You're probably going to want to have some kind of a tray or something to connect to that. Now you've got a throttle rod that's in the back side. This is going to be really hard. I don't think you can see it. But basically, there's a rod in there. And how you get it to disconnect, you take this off to get it out of your way. How you get it to disconnect, you pull the carburetor forward. And when you pull it forward, it causes this back piece of the carburetor, which I'll show you here. It causes, so this is like this. Is like this. When you pull it forward, it causes this to turn. That makes that rod line up with this slot. And now you can pop it up. So you pull the carburetor forward, and then you pop that rod up just like that. And then you take off the spring. And that is it. Now we have our carburetor off. Now I want to show you something else here because this is a common question people ask. The size of these carburetors is exactly the same. So you're not going to move the airbox any more forward. It's not going to hit the frame. It's not going to change any of that. The airbox is going to sit exactly where it sat with this carburetor, with this carburetor. The only thing that might cause any interference would be the fuel control valve. And on some models, the, this does cause an interference, usually with the back side of the airbox. So some models you do have to modify the back side of the airbox. Predator 9000s is an example. You either have to modify the back side of the airbox or we offer an, another airbox that you can buy with it which doesn't need modifying. You will have to drill a hole in that airbox to allow for the fuel vapor return um, but it doesn't hit this. But the, not all the Predator 9000s but most of them do seem to hit the back side. Now the older Predator 8750s didn't have that problem and they cleared the airbox. Um, so that's basically it but as far as this, and this is the case on all the carburetors we sell, this is exactly the same size. So the airbox is going to sit in exactly the same spot. So basically, now we're going to put this carburetor back on. So you got to, we have to take the gasket off from the original one. And we want to watch how we had that positioned and make sure we put it back on in the same position. So we're going to put our new gasket on. And then we're going to take our carburetor. And we're going to set it over here. We're going to again push it about halfway back. And then we're going to hook this device back into it. Like that. And put the spring on it. You'll see it when you get there. There's a little spring that sits back here. It just kind of holds that rod in place. Put that back on it. We're going to hook our fuel line back up to it. We're going to slide this clamp back down. Put it back all the way over. And then we're going to put our other gasket on. Slide this back. Put our other gasket on the right way. We're going to put our choke rod on. And we're going to put our air box back up here. Now, it's a little harder now to put the back screw back in the airbox. And the reason is now the fuel control valve's in the way. So I suggest putting that in first before you tighten these bolts up because that just makes it harder to position it. So we're gonna try to... Okay. Okay, so now we get that on. We're going to put these on. I suggest hand starting them first. Like that. And like that. And now we can use a gun. Tighten them up. We're going to put this plate back in. As like I said, it just kind of sits in there. If you have them, they don't all have these plates. Some of them have a different setup. So I'm going to have something that actually screws in place. Says this one, it just pops into place. 
Pass the airbox on. Now, just so you know also, you need to put the airbox back on before you start, try to start it. The airbox creates a certain amount of resistance. The airbox and filter. Without the airbox and filter, on some generators, there's not enough resistance. Therefore, it doesn't create a vacuum strong enough. And if the vacuum isn't strong enough, it won't open the fuel control valve. And so some generators literally will not run on natural gas or propane if this cover isn't, and the air filter back on, this cover back on. Like it needs to be fully back installed before you go ahead and try to run it. So we've got the carburetor on now. So now I'm going to come around to this side here. And I'm going to just get that out of the way. And so now we're going to hook our hose up because we are going to set this one up for LP. Uh, oops, drop my clamp. Slip that hose on. I'm going to tighten it up. Then we're going to slip it on this side. And we're going to tighten that one up. And that is it. The install is complete. So, again, we're going to move this thing out of the way a little bit. Okay, so now that we've got this installed complete, you can see that the function you need are right here on the outside. So here's your, your selector. If you want to switch from, from uh, LP to natural gas, you can do that. Now you can have, it, it, the camera will run on either LP or natural gas, but you can't have LP and natural gas with it at the same time. You can have either LP and gasoline or natural gas and gasoline, but you can't have LP and natural gas at the same time. So it's one or the other at a time for that. Okay, put that back. Is a purge valve. Now this down here, this little screw right here, this is basically, all this is, is if you want to store the generator and you want to drain the gasoline. So they put this here simply because once this valve's in place, you can't get at the drain valve on the carburetor anymore. So they put this here. This doesn't affect, this isn't connected to the inside of this at all. This is strictly a drain, so you would shut your pet clock off in the gasoline. You would take this plug out, and the gasoline would drain from there. And then you're, you could drain the bowl so that you would get your generator ready for storage. So that's all that's for. So basically, that is the install of our tri-fuel kit on the AI Power 4000. And uh, hopefully it helps you out. I thank you for watching, and have a good day.